All right, we are going to go over how meters work, uh, specifically voltmeters. And, uh, you know, voltage drop testing is something that a lot of people talk about, and you don't see a lot of practical applications for it. So before we get in deep about practical applications of voltage drop, it's important to understand that every time you use a voltmeter, you are actually doing a voltage drop measurement. And we're gonna demonstrate this a few different ways and hopefully make it make sense. And then in a later video, I'll show you guys some more practical applications of voltage drop testing, which again, is any time you're using a meter to measure voltage. So, you know, I know a lot of people explain it as if you're voltage drop testing like the positive side of a circuit or a negative side of a circuit, but literally any time you are measuring voltage with a meter, you're doing a voltage drop test. You're testing for the difference from the positive probe to the negative probe or from point A to point B. All you're measuring is the difference in voltage, not necessarily what voltage is there, just the difference. That's really important to understand, and uh, I hope this demonstration helps you understand it. So we have this power supply on the left set up at 12 volts. So there's 12 volts on this red lead here going through this lead here through an analog voltmeter reading 12 volts. And then on this side is the negative side of the analog voltmeter, and that goes up across the top of my shelf, back down, through this test light, to the ground at the uh, power supply. So, what we're going to do is manipulate this circuit so you can see the difference. And you can see I have the fluke set up here. You know, the difference is this is a, you know, this is a, a really a battery load tester, but it uses an analog volt meter. Uh, the nice thing about this gauge is it doesn't actually take any batteries or anything. It's just a basic analog meter. And even though you don't see any current flow on the amp setting, there has to be current flow for this meter to work. It's very, 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 very small, but it something's moving that needle, and it's the electricity. It's the difference between point A over here and point B over here. And that's what's moving that meter is a small amount of current flow through this meter. Now, it's obviously not enough current flow to light my test light, which this is a, like a 45 milliamp test light. And we'll demonstrate that by turning the switch on and the light turns on. So what I would like to demonstrate, since this is on the ground side, this light turns on. When I switch this switch, the voltage goes to zero on both the analog gauge and the digital multimeter. And you can see I have the fluke leads hooked up here and here. So it's measuring the difference from here to here. And when I flip this switch, it connects these two leads together and lights that test light. So when I, the switch is on, we know we have 12 volts here, 12 volts here, 12 volts over here, all the way up through the, the wire to this side of the light. We have 12 volts all the way to here. And then on this side, we have zero volts. But you can see both meters say zero volts. Now, why is that? Why would you think that that's the case? You know, is there no voltage available? We know there is, and we can prove that there's voltage available by moving our fluke ground lead or negative lead over here to the ground side of the test light and it reads 12 volts. So we know we have 12 volts here, right? And we know the difference between here and here is 12 volts. So when we move it over here to the ground side of, the meter, of this meter, what are we gonna measure? Well, it's 12 volts. So we know we have 12 volts coming out through here, through this meter, through this wire, all the way through to here. 
and we're measuring 12 volts. But this meter still says zero, even though we have 12 volts on this side and that side. And the reason it says zero is because the difference between point A and point B is zero, not 12 volts. The difference between point A and point B on the fluke meter is 12 volts because we're measuring it on this side. And we have 12 volts here, but not here because this is right at the ground at the power supply. So when I release that, the light shuts off. There's no more current flowing through this other than what it takes to move the needle. And we can move this back. And you can see we now have we now have 12 volts, 12 volts all the way through the circuit, but there's no current flow. And I'm going to demonstrate with a jumper lead in case the, the load on the battery tester confuses you. So we're going to just jumper from this positive side here to this side here. Uh, running out of room. And you can see as soon as we connect that, it goes to zero and our light comes on. And the reason that does that is because now we have 12 volts through this whole circuit all the way to the end of this, to the, the positive side of this light. The reason the meters both read zero is because the difference in voltage from here to here is zero. Uh, so I hope this is making sense. And this is where it throws a lot of people off because we do have 12 volts here. We know we have 12 volts because that light's lit. But the difference between this part of the circuit and this part of the circuit is zero. Now, if there's a resistor in place, like say the super high resistance of the analog voltmeter, when I take this off of here, that super high resistance causes it to read 12 volts here and or 12 volts between these two points. So it causes it to read 12 volts because there's 12 volts here and zero volts here because the voltage is stopped at the meter. That's important to understand that you may have 12 volts or voltage on the whole circuit. What you're reading on the meter isn't the voltage in the circuit. What you're reading on the meter is the difference between your positive lead and your negative lead, and that gives you a reading. And that's probably the single most important thing to understand when you're using a meter is you're not actually measuring at, you know, you're not actually measuring the voltage at the positive lead. And that's a common misconception that I see a lot of, you know, really smart people make that mistake. And you want to make sure that you understand you're only measuring the difference. And you can see here, so my fluke meter reads zero right now. If I connect it over here, it reads 12 volts. If I connect it, the ground or the negative lead to this side, at the same place the positive lead is, it's zero because the difference between the positive lead and this lead is zero. Even though that we all know there's 12 volts on all of this stuff right now. There's 12 volts here, there's 12 volts here. All of this has 12 volts on it, even over here. So when I reconnect this over here, now we have 12 volts all the way through that circuit, all the way to the light. And both meters read zero. Why? Both meters read zero because the difference in voltage from the positive lead to the negative lead is zero. You gotta remember that's that's all these are doing is they're doing comparative measurements from point A to point B. That's it. And if you so if there's a difference in voltage, it'll display on the meter. If there isn't, it'll display zero. That's really, really important because if you're testing, say, you know, say you're at the bottom, you know, underneath a car testing at the starter. And I'm going to take one of these leads and clip it right onto the starter 
battery plus lug right on the starter. And the other lead, because it's super inconvenient, I can't really get to the battery ground over here. But, you know, the starter is metal, and that's a chassis ground, right? So I connect to the chassis ground, and I have 12 volts. So that starter is going to work, right? Unless I hook this up and the, that reads 6 volts. Now, I don't know if my voltage is low on the positive side or the negative side. All I know is the difference between the positive lead and the negative lead is 6 volts then. So then that's where voltage drop testing comes into play. Then, since I know I have 6 volts available from the chassis ground or from at the B plus to the chassis ground if I have 6 volts, then that's where I need to do my voltage drop testing from the battery positive to the positive at the starter or from the chassis ground at the starter to the battery ground. Uh, that's where voltage drop testing comes into play because I don't know where I'm losing my voltage in that circuit. All I know is the difference across the terminals that connect to the component, the voltage is lower than I'd expect. So then I have to do my voltage drop testing. But you're always doing voltage drop testing just like we are here. You know, the difference from here to here is 12 volts. If I connect the two together, all of a sudden, the difference is zero volts, and that completes the circuit and my light lights. So, uh, I know I'm kind of pounding it to death, but I, you know, I really think it's necessary to keep beating this into your head till you understand it, because the mo that's the most common misconception. You know, if I go to a professional shop and have to diagnose an electrical issue, chances are the reason I'm there is because they don't understand this concept. They don't understand that the meter they're using isn't a voltage measuring device. It's a voltage difference measuring device. It measures the difference between the positive lead and the negative lead. And that once you understand that, everything that you're, you're taking measurements with will start to make sense. And again, that's why tools like the power probe are so handy because you connect right at the battery with that. So now all of your voltage readings at the tip of your probe are going to be referenced or your negative lead is going to be on the battery. So when you read a voltage with the power probe, you're reading the difference between the, the tip of that probe and the ground at the battery. And with a, with a meter, that's not always practical unless you've got you know a 20 foot lead to hook up directly to the battery and maybe that's the wisest thing to do or just understand that if you're going to test at a component the positive and negative at the component the only thing you're really doing is measuring the difference between your positive lead and your negative lead um, i hope this helps uh, this is all the time i've got for this video so uh you know thanks for watching if you want more content like this, like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you'd like to learn, and I'll do my best to help you through it. Thanks for watching.